What's happening? Welcome to another episode of Badass Builds. Today we're taking a look at this really cool 2020 Mercedes Sprinter slash tiny home that you may have seen before. I'm camping out with Chad from Living the Van Life and he has a really cool Mercedes Sprinter. And tell us a little bit about it. That's right. So this right here is my 2020 Mercedes Sprinter 4x4. Uh, I bought this brand new in November of 2020 right off the lot. Brand new blank cargo van and that's what I started with as a clean slate to build out my van build. Well it's not stock anymore so I see that you got some bumpers here, you got some lights. Tell us what's going on up front here. So as we start off here on the front I've got a Warren Xeon 12S Platinum. Uh, this is my winch of choice for any sort of recovery situations. I told myself when I put a winch on my van I wasn't going to be one of those guys that had a winch and didn't use it. So I actually use it quite a bit, not necessarily to get myself unstuck, but yarding rocks out of the way, yarding logs out of the way. It's actually come in quite handy. Definitely happy that I've got this on board. Um, that's held on here with a CA tuned off-road bumper. This is the hammerhead bumper. And on top of that, we've got some Baja Designs LP9s. And that's followed up with the ones up on top on the roof rack. Uh, so I've got a total of what is it, seven of the Baja Design LP9s, uh, and then I've got some of the XL Pros as windshield ditch lights. Safe to say you can see at night. That's right. You yeah. know, <laughs> I feel like these days we see so many rigs pumped out with tons of lights, and my theory is there is no such thing as too much light when it comes to navigating trails off-road at night. Um, these things have actually saved my rear several times out in the desert, so I'm definitely thankful to have the lights on board for sure. So kind of my goal with this printer van was to blur the lines between van life and overlanding and find that ultimate off-roading full-time livable machine. Now tons of people always say hey man a Toyota or a Jeep can get way further than a Sprinter van and that's very clear but this is also much more comfortable for a full-time living so that's what I wanted to kind of find the, uh, the balance between. So to get this thing up off the ground, I went with the Van Compass Stage 6.3 lift and suspension kit. It's got fully adjustable Falcon shocks on it. It's a two inch lift uh, that gives you two inches of ride height over the stock four x four height. Uh, and then of course that allows you to run bigger size tires so that gets you up overall. So I'm thinking probably by time lift and suspension is done, I'm sitting about three to four inches higher than stock. Okay. And it's already a tall truck. So this is this taller than a normal Sprinter van? Uh, so the Sprinter vans actually come in two different configurations as far as body-wise. This is the high top. They do also make a low top, but this is indeed the high top. Okay, all right. So that makes sense. So that's how you're able to stand up in there full. That is correct. And yeah. you got some skid plates underneath there. Now, I don't do a sock check, but I do a skid check. Let's see what we're looking like. We got some skids up underneath the skid plate. Yeah, absolutely. That was... Like I said, I wasn't going to just build this thing to be a pavement princess, so uh, Van Compass outfitted the uh, bash guard with their bash guard, and then also underneath the subframe and the engine is another skid plate by Van Compass, and I'm definitely thankful that I've got that in there because I've definitely used it. Uh, in fact, even all the way at the back rear end on the pumpkin, there is a, uh, a bash guard as well back there, and it's came to handy <laughs> well getting in here was not you know the absolute easiest by any means but you made it uh you made quick work of it yeah and yeah. i've seen this thing go off road and get some pretty strong articulation too yeah so i've got uh also again by van compass is their sway bar disconnect which these sprinter vans are known to handle actually quite exceptionally well on the highway but that's because it's got a nice fatty sway bar up front which is great for the highway but when it comes to off-road it really doesn't get much articulation so with that disconnect removed that does gain actually like two to three inches of more flex which okay every little bit helps on this thing for yeah sure. for sure so you went from having the articulation of a camry up to the articulation of a of a truck of some sort huh <laughs> yeah yeah so nice get there, yeah. and you've got some uh, rock sliders again on the side here now is that the same company or who makes these so this is uh rugged design uh concepts they actually build the side steps they also build the rack up top that we see that's holding the the LP9s, um, so, and they also did my rear bumper as well. Okay. So while these are 
technically they aren't an actual rock slider. These are aluminum and they're just uh, screwed into the pinch weld. They're exceptionally sturdy for a step, which is nice. Uh, but the way I look at it is it's going to protect the body somewhat before it, uh, you know, before rock goes in and dents the, the actual rocker panel. Better than nothing. Better than nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And what size tires are these? Because you said they're oversized. Do you know what size they are? Yeah, so I'm running a 285-75R17 uh, BFG KO2s, and they're sitting on Black Rhino Arsenal wheels. Okay, and so that what's what is that like a 33? Uh, yeah, you know, I think BFG specs it out as like a mid 34, but by the time you put a tape measure on it, it's like a high 33. Got it. Yeah. Got it. As far as like drivetrain stuff underneath, it also has a rear locker. It's an ARB air locker that uh, Agile Off-Road has worked together with ARB and developed that. That's a new thing for sprinters that's never been available. And I tell you what, that turned this thing into a completely different beast. Yeah. The, thing, the thing's a tank now. Yeah, so this thing's locked in the back then. Yeah. With an air locker. With an air locker. What about up front? Is it locked up front or no? No, just, uh, just the stock front differential. Um, that's perhaps in the works but they okay. started with the back they're working way to the front in fact they're even working on an atlas transfer case for these things to get an actual true four by four out of this thing so that's in development as well yeah that'll be fun let's see what you got going on in the back here yeah you're a uh you're a videographer yep and a photographer of yep. sorts so i see you got your rig here but you also got the one wheel yeah and that all requires lots of power to yeah. keep charged up. So tell me, what do you have as far as power-wise goes? So in the back here, in the back of the Sprinter van, I've got 600 amp hours of Battleborn battery lithium ions, uh, and it's all managed by a Victron system. Uh, and and it's true. I basically with the whole YouTube channel, I've got a film production studio on wheels. So I've got camera gear. I've got laptops that I've got to run. Um, also the toys of course I've got an e-mountain bike on the back and now the one wheel so I feel like these days we're becoming more and more reliant on electricity so having reliable batteries in the back is absolutely key for what I do out here on the road so take us through what all you got on is that a swing out on the bumper or what is this so the bumper is actually all standalone it makes for a nice step but it actually doesn't support any of this on here we've got a full-size spare tire mounted here on the back this is with an agile off-road tire carrier and that's actually bolted on to the hinges of the rear door on the driver's side um, over here on this side uh, it's a owl vans rack that gives me the ability to put the one-up bike rack on the back here that carries the e-mountain bike up top and then i've got the uh, carrier box here and this is basically like the shed out back if you will um, inside here I've got all the fluids that you would need, um, lubricants, stuff like that. I've got a little electric blower. Works great for stoking up the fire, but also blowing dust off the doors here. Um, and this bag is my full recovery gear. So just about everything I would need to winch myself out, tree savers, uh, extra winch line, shackles, etc. cetera. Um, and then back here, a little 12 inch DeWalt electric chainsaw. So this is the shed out back and it's nice having it back here and not inside the van where it's the living space, of course. Yeah, that's really cool. So that swing out is is on the hinges. It's not on the bumper itself. Yeah, that is correct. It's all supported on the hinges of the door. And the reason I wanted that is because the way I have the back of the van built out, I'm back here multiple times a day. So it, I didn't want one more thing to unlatch before I actually opened the door. So with this, we're going to see this whole thing swing away. With oh the, wow uh, door like so including the mountain bike i didn't want a hitch mount for that reason but then this also swings out here and we'll lock around the back there nice and i see you got your quick fist up here i saw your big axis over there by the fire and then you got the little guy there and that's all held up by those quick fists huh yep. yeah that's been a, a actually pretty popular thing that people are always asking about on the van and it makes it quick and accessible but yet they're not bouncing around in, in the middle of everything else so um, and you got some drawers back here you got a whole nother garage back here dude yeah yeah and typically with the sprinter vans and van life we consider this area the garage area um i've seen so many people just have this completely wide open and they're just stacking boxes and whatever else what other gear they've got back there so 
with this I wanted to maximize this whole entire area with these pull-out trays uh, on each side it's nice because it allows me to actually pull this all the way out and you can see the amount of totes and stuff that I've got back here that are all stackable so I can really access that easier and then everything just slides back away when you're done with it um, I also thought that I wanted more space than just that so I went with a drawer system like this and I actually designed this in SketchUp on the computer and then used um, my buddy's CNC machine to cut this all out and assemble it and so like here I've got all my cast iron I've got two Dutch ovens and a skillet for all my campfire cooking that I do for my YouTube channel um, and then more tools for that same cooking um, under this storage here this is like all the tools that I would need to work on the van if something were to happen on the trail or out on the road. Um, I always like to be as prepared as possible with tools. So that's all here under this. And then if we slide this back in here, it's kind of designed to go about there if it'll stay. And then on this side, this was kind of a happy accident. Um, as I was designing, I decided, you know what, why not put a uh, cooktop here and then since I've got the cooktop here I've still got space underneath you can put in another cutting board style of food prep area or whatever to be able to work on here so propane burner here it's a cook partner I had originally done this flip lid here which is cool but then when this lid is open you lose this prep space here so over here I wanted to kind of do it as this style oh nice to where they pop up yeah and then this is kind of my pantry so this whole outdoor kitchen literally was like an, an afterthought and to be honest with you i'm glad that was a happy accident that happened because this becomes my favorite part of the whole van when you pull up to moab and you roll this thing out and you just start cooking a meal as yeah. the sun's going down it's pretty hard to beat don't get much better than yeah. that dude that is awesome and then you got your batteries and all that good stuff back there taking up the left side yeah it's six of the 100 amp hour batteries uh by battleborn uh like i said it's pretty much a whole victron system that manages the system it's a 3000 watt inverter so plenty of power to do anything i want to do on the road that you got some plugs over there yeah i've got outlets so the uh e-bike is plugged in here so it can charge while it's going down the road um also i plug in my starlink back here and that i've got starlink permanently installed in the van so when i'm out off the grid working on videos i've got internet access you know at the at the flip of a switch which is that's awesome, awesome. Yeah, Starlink's definitely a game changer for this whole deal. Yeah, yeah, and the one, the one wheel is going to sit up here, and it can get charged while we're uh, driving, and it's all ready to go for the next stop. So. All right. Well, yeah, that's this, badass. This area is key because it's a little bit of a mess right now, but uh, you know, living on the road full time. I mean, you're so minimal on things. Yeah. I look at that, I'm like, <laughs> I need to like start cleaning some of this stuff out. But um, yeah, it's worked out fairly well so far well let's go check out the front which is what got you qualified for badass builds because okay. you built out the inside yourself right i did i did this whole whole thing myself really started like i said with the blank cargo van and uh started from the floor up and ended up with this this is the inside of the crib and first and foremost i like to say that the fit and finish on this is probably not going to come through on the camera but this is really good fit and finish i mean it looks like an airplane in here yeah, thanks, man. You know, with living in it full time, I wanted it to feel pretty homey. Um, there's certainly other options to build out a van much lighter. And if I was going to be kind of one of the weekend warriors, maybe go on a few week trip here and there and and just focus mo mainly on overlanding and off roading, I'd probably go with a little bit more of a min minimalistic build. But because I am full time, I wanted it to feel really comfortable. I wanted it to be something that I was proud of you know when it was all said and done so um, like I said it started with the blank cargo van uh, I started with the wiring which is a little bit of a challenge because you really have to know where you want plugs and switches and lights and everything to land and that's the first thing you got to do uh, so that everything ends up in the right spot um, and then it was insulation and then it's wall panels this is uh, quarter inch plywood and then it's got eighth inch foam upholstery foam and then i've got the marathon fabric that's wrapped around that so 
So I did all my own upholstery in here. Um, and then it was time for the cabinets. And of course that's kind of the, you know, the main stage for a van is how do you do your layout? And I went back and forth with four or five different ideas that I wanted. And at the end of the day, I ended up with a layout very similar to my 1991 Volkswagen Westfalia, which I started living in, you know, 12 years ago. So we've got a nice uh, cabinetry. This is all custom cabinets uh, by a friend of mine that is a custom cabinet builder. So I came up with the layout and with his CNC machine, you know, he figured out how to construct it in here and that's how everything um, has come together so nicely here. But it was really cool being a part of that process firsthand and watching how all that happens. I mean, it's amazing how those guys work. Um, the upper cabinets is a, an aluminum shell. And then we faced the, the cabinet doors with the same wood so it all matches. Uh, and then I custom installed this under cabinet light setup here. Um, I just like that kind of under lighting anytime you can do that. So I ended up using these lights 90% of the time. Um, but I did outfit the ceiling with uh, another 12 lights and uh, that was really mainly so that if I'm in here at night and needed to film with plenty of light I can have that option. Since I do my YouTube channel full time on the road I've built this whole camera storage area underneath the cabinet. Got to get an idea where things are at. I've got my drone, uh, two DSLR bodies, uh, pretty much everything I need to do to run my whole entire YouTube channel. Everything's always in here, plugged in, charged up, ready to go anytime I want to pick up the camera and film. Um, of course, you got power running through there too. Yep, yep. I've got USB outlets there because uh, so much of what we do these days is ran off of USB. Uh, and then there's also AC outlets for those items that need uh, 120 volt. Um, I also included a sink inside here. Now, this is a very basic 12 volt uh, water system. Uh, down under here, it's actually all fed just by a five gallon jerry can up through the 12 volt pump and that gives me water to the sink. Um, I do a lot of winter camping and so the under chassis water tanks just weren't going to work. I didn't want to deal with plumbing, freezing, all that stuff so I kept things simple and on the inside. And for washing my hands and my face, brushing my teeth, and walk, rinsing the occasional dish, it, it actually works out quite well. So, so this doesn't have a built-in water tank, then. So you're just using that. That's correct. Yeah. And that. what about gray water? So I do underneath, actually underneath this area here, uh, underneath the chassis, is a 15-gallon uh, gray water tank, and so that's installed there. So that if I'm ever like in a state park or in a city and I need to capture my gray water right. then that's there um, but most of the time like I said it's just washing my hands and brushing right my on. teeth and that I usually just leave that tank open and it drains nice you know, as I go so um, really from there it's uh, all other cabinetry this seat that I'm sitting in here actually doubles as you know like a, a kitchen table but then most importantly um, my workspace yeah yeah my uh, I wanted to a seat that was comfortable for that so I can sit here and I work on my laptop sometimes up to 12 hours a day editing right here so I wanted this to be comfortable I wanted to be able to see out the view and so I've got this here on a, on a lagoon table yeah um, and then under this cabinet here this is a pullout and this is where I have my 12 volt angle fridge uh, on a slide so that'll come out this gives me access either while I'm inside or when I'm outside cooking, so it's uh, super easy to access this from anywhere on the van. Very nice. Uh, it is a dual fridge, so I've got refrigerator here, I've got freezer here. I've always got a bag of ice for cocktails or cold drinks on the road, which is nice. Um, then as we move back, uh, this is my flare space bed system. Now the flare spaces give me the option of bumping out, if you see here on the sides, uh, both on the passenger side as well as the driver's side. It's got the fiberglass bump outs. By adding those, you gain an extra 10 inches of space and it allows you to sleep east to west in the so van. So you need that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and you fit clear across the side there with those flare spaces. Yep. Huh. Yep. Okay. Sure do. I had yep. wondered about that. So yeah. you sleep sideways, which saves a lot of room. 
Yeah, and kind of the way they tout it is the fact that when you can turn your bed sideways, you gain 10 inches this way, but you gain an extra 20 inches of living space to work with in the front. So, you know, otherwise that bed would probably be somewhere around in here. Yeah. That's a, that's a significant amount of space that we're losing uh, or gaining, I should say, um, by having the bed. And it's a full-time made bed. It's not a bed that I need to flip out or unfold or make every day. Um, which was a benefit of the Sprinter van as opposed to like the Westphalia where, you know, at the end of the day, you gotta unfold the bed. At yeah. the beginning of the day, you gotta put it back up. Put so. your cushions up, figure yeah. out the jigsaw puzzle with them. And then, yeah. 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 Well, this is cool, man. This is minimalist, but it, it's got everything that you need. So, cause I've seen some pretty elaborate van setups. I don't see a shower in here though. So how do you go about doing that? Yeah, so, and that's that's also one of the biggest questions that I get on the channel is where do you go to the bathroom and how do you use a shower? And I spent 10 years living out of the Volkswagen and with the Volkswagen, I didn't have the option of a shower or a bathroom in such a small uh, area of a vehicle. So I really got good at doing it outside. So while I was traveling, I'm sorry, outside the van, I should say, while I was traveling, I would use truck stops. Truck stops have really comfortable showers and everything um, and then when it comes to the bathroom you know I everybody asks well, where do you go to the bathroom and you know I say well the, every coffee shop every restaurant gas station grocery store there's so many bathrooms out there let them deal with the bathrooms and keep you know the maximum amount of living space um, I do carry the little luggable loo in the back for the occasional emergency and as a solo guy you know it's pretty easy to, to deal with um, versus if I was a family or had a girlfriend traveling with me, of course, you know, there's a little extra needs there, but I just wanted to maximize my space in here without taking it up in the shower or, you know, a toilet. It would be a whole different ball game in here. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, you definitely did that and it, you definitely made good use of it. Now you can cook right up here too. I don't have anything built in, in here, but of course I could do the induction style, uh, burner in here, which, which would be handy on a, ra a rainy day. But if it's raining outside and I can't cook outside, you know, I do a simple can of soup in the jet boil or go out and grab a bite to eat or, you Good know, to whatever. Go. So, yeah. Yeah. Really cool, man. And I see over here you're using magnets, which I'm a big fan of magnets. Yeah. Yeah. I love magnets. Got a spot for the keys. The keys go there every night. And it's easy to lose your keys in a van type situation. But in that emergency, if something were to happen at night, you got to make a, a quick move outside. I know my keys are always hanging there. Um, like I mentioned, I spend a lot of time in the winter uh, going out and traveling, camping, doing videos. That's a big part of my channel. Matter of fact, I drove to the Arctic Ocean in February with this thing as, as we see it here. So my heat source is important. Um, down underneath here, uh, I've got the diesel heater installed and that's what I use for heat. Because the van is a diesel motor, I can just tap into the fuel tank and i've been as cold as negative 40 degrees outside and it's been nice comfortable 70 to 75 degrees inside uh with that you won't find me camping next to you at negative 40. <laughs> that's crazy man yeah so no problems and in insulated all the way through how'd you how'd you do the insulation so there's insulation from floor to walls to ceiling and i use the 3m thinsulate uh, material uh, it's nice and easy to work with. It's not like fiberglass. Um, so I, I chose that. There's several different options out there. Not saying 3M is the best, but it worked for me. And it kept me warm while I was out in the cold. So Yeah, negative yeah. 40 is a pretty good test for it. So if it kept it you warm, that's pretty good. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the craziest trail you've taken it on? Oh, man. Um, definitely have hit some fun stuff out in Moab. Um, done some stuff out in Borrego Springs um, this thing actually handles you know terrain fairly well not not like you would think a vehicle like this would uh, but with a little bit of patience a little bit of skills and the right equipment on the van you can actually push these things out there um, out in Moab you know not that it's an extreme trail but uh, you know like Hoorah Pass out to Chicken Corners is fun um, out in Borrego, we did Oriflame Canyon, which is quite the Jeep trail. We had a couple sprinter vans up there. Um, so, you know, stuff like that. And I just, when I'm out exploring dirt roads, I don't like to be held back by just having two bases of, of the vehicle. I'd rather build it out so that, you know, I'm more apt to be able to 
cross an obstacle if I find it in my way. Yeah. So. Being able to find camp spots too is nice. So yeah. I've found that if you go down the sketch, you're looking roads, and then you can find a camp spot that's yeah. good. Yeah, because so at that, that point, works. then you're traveling the, the path less traveled, yeah. and you're going to find yourself in some really cool spots. That's yeah. awesome, man. Well, where can everybody go to see this thing in action? Uh, so if you guys want to see more, learn more about the van and the adventures I go on, you can head over to YouTube. And on YouTube, it is Living the Van Life. And it's also the same on Instagram. It's just all one word on Instagram. And that's where, you know, between those two, I post the most and interact with my subscribers and people that like to follow the channel. That's awesome, man. Well, thanks for taking us around your house, and I'll see you out on the trail. Yeah, you bet. Peace out, guys. Keep on trucking.